my God When I am an awesome wonder Consider all The works thy hand has made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout The universe displayed Then sings my soul My soul, my Savior, God to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! When through the woods and for. Lofty mountain grandeur And see the brook And feel the gentle breeze Then sings my soul My Savior God Shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in home. How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great
Good evening, neighbors. I'm afraid that we can't have our Ash Wednesday service in person, but I hope that this is the, the next best thing. The, the roads have just been too slick, we've heard, and we want everybody to be safe. Speaking of Ash Wednesday, a lot of people may not know kind of what Ash Wednesday is really all about. You, you see, in ancient times, even before Christ, when somebody was, in, uh, was grieving or uh, feeling um, tremendous loss or, or tremendous guilt over something that they had done, it was kind of a tradition to uh, sprinkle ashes over themselves. Actually, they wouldn't just sprinkle it, they would pour ashes on themselves. They would put on uh, ripped and torn cloth and they would uh, have this kind of period of uh, repentance. Repentance truly just means uh, turning back toward uh, something. Uh, sin is often times when we've gone off the mark, it, it turned away from God. And this was a way of turning back to something. The reason for the ashes was to remind themselves of just how, uh, how mortal we are, how fragile we are, and how life can just go like that. And that the important things uh, are in the long term of things, not the here and now. And so it was to uh, remind ourselves that uh, we are suffering and we are hurting, but there's something bigger than ourselves. That's why we do the cross, is during this time, we remind ourselves just how fragile we are. And fragile not only in, in, in life and physical being, but... Fragile in our ability to be perfect. Every one of us has sinned. And this is a time when we look back on even the past year and say, gosh, I wish I would have done that, or I turned left when I should have turned right, or uh, there, are, there are things that I have done that I am just deeply ashamed of, and there are things that I, that, I, that I grieve of decisions that I've made. And so that's when we remind ourselves of, of how fragile we are and how much we need the presence of Christ in our life, Christ who... Uh, understood that feeling that died, that rose again for the forgiveness of us. He, he kind of, like a friend, uh, he, he took the bullet for us. Uh, he took the suffering in, in a world of violence, in, in a world of chaos. He said, you know what? I'm going to take that and I'm going to show you that after uh, this, this world is there's going to be another world. There's going to be something better. There's going to be something more beautiful. There's going to be something, um, uh, there's going to be a kingdom, a kingdom for all of you. And, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you by conquering the, the very nature of death. Uh, and, and someday uh, this earth will be transformed into a new kingdom, a, a new heaven. And as we are transformed, as we are uh, resurrected, this is all what we remind ourselves of, but in this present time, we look at the things that are preventing us from, from understanding that, from seeing that, from forming a relationship with Jesus Christ, from, from forming that, cr that crucial um, relationship. You know, I don't want to do, you know, a lot of churches at this time will, will start to do like a, a fire and brimstone thing of, you. oh, you better, you know, enjoy Jesus now because if you don't, you're going to go and all that kind of stuff. I want to talk more about the today. Uh, Having Christ in our life today is such, a, is such a help for us. There are so many times when things are just ugly in this world. One doesn't have to look very far. There are earthquakes. There are the threats of, of war. There is war. There's violence. There's attacks. There's pandemics. There, there's all of this stuff going on in the world that when we look at the, the, the news every morning, it can depress us. It can make us feel awful. It can also make us feel awful when we look at ourselves sometimes, when we look at the things that we've done. Imagine if our life were the headlines that we looked at each day and said that this is the things that, are, that are, we're doing wrong. And some of us, that's exactly what we do. We start off the day with that negativity and that of, of seeing where we have turned wrong and where we have done things that we're ashamed of. And sometimes what we do when we feel uh, that burden of all of those things that we've done in our lives, uh, we try to medicate it by do, doing worse. And it starts what we call a vicious circle. Uh, we, we do something that uh, we know isn't right, that, that separates us from God, 
Uh, we feel guilty about it. We try to medicate that by either, um, well, medicating, uh, or by an action that uh, continues to cause more harm. This is the time that we're reminded of our, uh, how fragile life is. And if we take that vicious circle and we insert the love of Jesus Christ in there, we, we do something that uh, takes us away from Christ. We do something that, that is a sin. We, we do something that, that is harmful to either ourselves or someone else. Now, what happens if we were to confess that? Instead of uh, trying to medicate that or feel bad about it ourselves and things like that, what if we, when the time that we felt guilty about that, we, we actually met with Christ and we talked to Christ and we said, this is, this is what I've done. Help me to correct it. Help me to amend this for whoever I've harmed, whether it's somebody else or myself. Help me to come back to you. And that's what Ash Wednesday is all about. We remind ourselves that without Christ, we are simply dust. We, we are simply just fragile, fragile beings in this fragile world, this, this world that continues to do harm. This is the time that we, are, we sit and we have a conversation with Christ, and we say, hey, truly, I'm nothing without you. Help me to, to be better at what I was. Help me, help me to right the wrongs that I've done this year. Help me to become closer to you. Have that conversation with Christ. That's what, we, that's what this whole season is about. You, you often hear that we, we go into the season of Lent where we, we give things up, and we, we you know, it's... it's it's all about whatever you can do to help build that relationship with Jesus Christ. For some of us, it's, it's going without certain things, things that uh, get in our way, you know, that, that can, uh, can sometimes distract us from, from Christ. Uh, sometimes it's praying more. Sometimes instead of giving something up, it's actually adding something to your life. More prayer, uh, more conversation. Uh, how about, you know, instead of getting up and just looking first thing at the news or even worse, getting up and looking at yourself and just putting yourself down, you, you begin that day with a, a prayer. You begin that day with a, a talk with God. You, you begin the day knowing that Christ loves you.
in the Old Testament, there was uh, King David who did a major sin, and I, I won't get into uh, all of this, but he, he did something that caused the life of somebody else and ruined the life of many people including uh, himself in many ways. He was uh, irreparably harmed by his own actions. And King David is a person that uh, is famous for uh, being credited as writing many of the, the Psalms that we celebrate today. Uh, here's one that I'd like to read to you, and we'll close out with this. It's a Psalm that David uh, wrote uh, to God after he had been confronted of a great sin. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You, you desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow." Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all of my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. It's this psalm that reminds us that every one of us has fallen short. Every one of us has done something. And there's something that is, there's something that's very powerful about knowing that, that we don't always get it right. The, the very first thing that's powerful about that is knowing that we have Jesus Christ in our life. That the whole message of Easter, the whole resurrection, is there for a reason. It's, it's there to know that it's going to be okay. It's the shining light. It's the hope in our world. It's the thing that keeps us going, even when we have fallen short. The other thing that knowing that we are sinners does is that if we know that we're not perfect, we're not going to expect perfection from others. We're going to accept each other for who we are and work together to be better, to support each other the way that Christ supports us, to forgive each other the way that Christ forgives us, to walk with each other to become better people the way that Christ walks with us. That's really the message of what Ash Wednesday is all about. It's really about owning the things that we have done that have harmed ourselves and others, confessing that to Christ, being forgiven by Christ, and moving on, and moving forward in a loving relationship with Christ. I hope that we can all do that. I, I hope that today is a new beginning. I hope that this Ash Wednesday begins a new life for us all. I, I hope that this in, invites us, inspires us, and invigorates us to work even more at that relationship with Jesus Christ, Christ who loves us, Christ who died for us, Christ who lives again for us, and Christ that walks with us each and every day. Love God, love yourself, love your neighbor. Amen.
Shine.